Yeah. Get started. Yes, I'm uh, Dr. Ben Shogler, and this is a Skoog. You can see it's a soft, tactile uh, musical instrument designed specifically to address the barriers that young people face in making music, particularly barriers faced by uh, young people with disabilities. And to do that, we at Skoog, we just invented uh, an instrument that was easy to play. So we're all about making it facilitating participation and making things inclusive, making them fun. And to do that, we created this engaging device. It's this squishy, tactile a musical instrument that has its own app and a range of apps that it comes with. And after, you know, you know, after a couple of um, years and once uh, Apple then approached us about looking to see if we could start exploring how to use it with Swift Playground. So Swift Playground is Apple's platform for learning Swift, uh, which we're going to look at. And it's, it's really amazing. So I mean, if you have iPads or if even if now, if you have uh, Mac laptops, uh, Swift Playgrounds is free on those platforms, and it is an entire syllabus. It's a curriculum for coding, right from having never done any coding before, right up to building your own apps in real Swift code. It's the, the code that, that we build apps for Skoog in. Uh, it's the code that we use as, as professional developers, and it is a really engaging platform and with lots of uh, opportunity for different projects and engaging different types of tech in it and making it more multi-sensory. So whilst we're going to be looking at the playgrounds, well, I think there's also an element to the playgrounds that really actually brings coding to life in a multi-sensory way that makes it quite good for demonstrating and engaging students in a special ed context. So we're going to try and balance those few things. So for those who don't know, that's a Skoog. It's a soft, squishy controller, has an app. So you press the Skoog and it makes the sounds. There's a different note assigned to each side. It's configurable. It can change the sounds. You can change the notes. It has lots of um activities you can do you can use color following and all these kind of things but what we're here today today to talk about so we're going to quit out of that app is swift playgrounds now for those of you that don't know it's is apple's learning to code platform it is incredibly um well supported the each it has sort of blocks of lessons are well documented and they're really actively engaging students in writing their own code from the first moment. So it's free on, on, on iPads and it's free on Mac OS. And so what we've, I've done here is I've just gone to, I've gone to the app store, say, let's have a look here. And I've done a search. Ooh, okay, let's do a search here. And we go Swift in there, Swift Playground. And there you'll see, there it is, Swift Playgrounds with the little Swift icon of the uh, bird. So I already have it downloaded, so I don't need to do that. I'm going to go to Swift on my machine. And I just want to open up Apple's um, Learn to Code 1, which is the kind of starting point for starting with the Swift Playgrounds. And it has this really great introduction to coding where it's saying, Learn to Code 1, learning about commands. And it says, have you ever followed a recipe to bake something delicious? Okay. Or follow instructions to assemble something cool. You need to follow instructions in the correct order. You'll end up with something unexpected. And writing code is just that. You know, it's, it's about having a set of instructions, working out what order they need to go in to create something great. Now, really interestingly in parallel, you know, music is very similar. You have to have the know what notes you need to make the song and then the right notes in the right order, in the right way, in the right code, the right instructions to play the song. And so the two things blend in, in quite an incredible way. So this is just talking you through um, the starting Swift Play programs, which has this character called Byte, who really students direct around different kind of maze challenges to move them around and to solve problems. And in doing so, they learn how to write commands using real Swift code. Um, and let's just, just, just start here. And so this is a kind of standard Swift playground. It has on the left-hand side, you can see the code view. And then we've got some music playing. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. There we go. And on the right, you have what's called the live view. And this shows you sort of what the code is actually doing when you run it. So here you can say it says, move forward, move forward, move forward, collect gem. And if I hit run my code, we should see the character move forward, move forward, move forward, and collect the gem. Now. And that's it, you've done it and you move on to the next page. Now, as you can see here, there's 
little lessons that build one on top of the other, learning new things, learning different types of coding commands and these kind of things. And so it's a really well-supported platform in that sense. So I couldn't recommend that enough. And actually, oh, one of the, let's go back in here. So one of the great things that you're going to see here. So if I tap in here, so this is the bit that you can edit. Now, you can see down at the bottom of the iPad screen, I've got two shortcuts have popped up, collect gem and move forward. Now, the great thing about Swift Playgrounds here is it has these code shortcuts that appear when you go to edit and put the code in. And that means that students, if you, know, if you do this on a kind of screencast or on a share on, on, on the projector, then students can simply come up and you can say, right, what are you going to change here? You're going to make it do collect gem. And instead of having to type out lots of complicated code, you can just select that piece of code and it types it in for you. So that's great in terms of its accessibility, you know, in terms of making it um, suitable for a wider range of learners and really makes it quite a great for a shared class activity. I've seen, I've seen this work so well in mixed ability classes where you know students taking turns coming up to to the to the iPad that's broadcast to the screen, choosing the different bits of code, you know, quizzing the class, which you know, what should we do? Should we enter this? Should we enter that? What do we think solves the problem? So that is is just a, a short introduction to Swift Playgrounds. I would recommend going on Apple's website, apple.com, and searching for Swift Playgrounds. Loads of really great information there, supported resources, also on Apple Teacher. Um, it's it's full of useful stuff. But we're here tonight to talk about Skoog and Swift Playgrounds. So um, this uses code to make it work. It's built on code. It's this apps are built in Swift. And so what our Swift Playground does is allows you to kind of take the lid off the Skoog and it's what's happening inside, what magic is going on to allow you to press and make these sounds. And it lets students see that Pat pattern of data going across, see how things are put together. And, you know, in, in the same way as by learning through play and learning by doing, by, you know, allowing people to see the actual process of how things work, you know, we, we learn so much more and we get a better understanding. And what it does, because Skoog is so tactile and auditory, then it actually also brings a whole multi-sensory element to coding and exploring coding in your class, which again can increase the engagement, increase its... Um, sort of accessibility in terms of its, its, co its appeal to different uh, uh, levels of ability or different individuals in the class. So why don't we um, get stuck in, shall we? So um, I've got quite a lot to cover. I, there's also, we're gonna look at a couple of robots as well and how they interact and how they interact with Skoog. So I'm gonna go through, uh, first look at the Skoog playground, and then we're gonna look at the, probably the Sphero and Skoog playground. And Sphero is this little robotic ball robot and how you can interact those. And then I'd like to finish by just stepping back a bit and also thinking about coding, music, and just looking at some different uh, examples of exercises you might do that maybe don't rely on Swift so much, but really are about exploring coding and those principles of um, instructions, problem solving, and getting things in the right order. Okay, so let's just see. Are there any questions at the moment? Uh, no, I think we're good. So... Without further ado, I'm going to press on and open the Skoog Playground. So oh, we started, I was uh, busy doing things. So I'm going to, so here, actually, here's an important one. In Swift Playgrounds, when you open it, you go to My Playgrounds, and then at the bottom is More Playgrounds. And if you haven't subscribed to the Skoog feed, you would just tap See All, and then you would scroll down, and you'd see at the bottom from other publishers. Now, I've already subscribed to our feed, but hey, so if you go along the bottom here, see I'm scrolling along. And you can see there's Skoog Music, Learn to Code. And if you select that, that will enable you to then access our playground. Okay, so I've already got mine. I'm going to go back to the beginning. Yes, I'd like to use Bluetooth. Let's go to the introduction here. So this is Skoog Swift Playground, and it's bringing together coding and music. So there's a little introduction to, the, to Skoog, which is a musical cube you can use to play notes and sounds these people having fun. It also has um, this little virtual, I'm tapping the screen here, which is kind of fun. And it's, that's all there is here, just a very brief introduction to Skoog, and then we go start coding. So for those of you that are not familiar, that are familiar with Skoog, you're going to see a quite a different um, approach here. So I'm going to explain a few things. For those that are new to Swift and Skoog, then this will be 
this will be new to you as well. So hopefully new to everyone. So again, as I showed before, you've got the code view and the live view. And I am going to go up here and say, connect my SCOOG. Now to connect my SCOOG, I look at the bottom of my SCOOG and there's a little button. I tap it once to turn it on. And I tap it another time, just a small tap to make the Bluetooth light flash. And I say, connect SCOOG and say, connect. And it says connecting. Now, importantly, if you're an iOS 14, don't pair. Uh, just say cancel and it still connects. There's a, a kind of mismatch in the pairing at the moment. So yes, if you're connecting your SCOOG, either in the SCOOG apps or with Swift, just click cancel when it asks you to pair. It will still connect as normal and function, but it just it doesn't like pairing. So let's just see it. So this is just a quick example. Now you can see there's some instructions in the top left there. And this is just giving you an example. Now this first page just gives you an example of the kind of things that are possible with your Skoog and Swift Playground. So I'm gonna run the code here. And now you can see some from sort of familiar things. Now, another cool thing you can do with Swift is I'm gonna to touch in the middle of the screen here and it actually allows me to make that, that visual part the whole screen. So again, if you're engaging in a class and stuff and you want it to be more visual and on a display, this is another really great tool in, in Swift. Now, here you can see we've got in the center of the black dot, that's what we call the Skoog kind of um, feedback indicator. So if I press the orange, turn up the volume a bit, you can see this orange ring goes out. And if I press green, green, red, blue. So yeah. So these ripples come out. And then you can see these other colored dots. Now the colored dots there are something called pings. Now you might have noticed that when I press an orange, I get an orange ripple. And when it, the orange ripple hits the white ping, it makes a noise. And when it hits the orange ping, it makes a noise. Now, white pings can be triggered by any ripple, any kind of pulse from the Skoog. And then the colored ones are triggered by the specific color. So that's what makes us be able to play these kind of these different patterns. Now we can make arpeggios. We can actually, we could make chords. So if I bring the orange one, the white one in there, then I've got a chords on a skook. How cool is that? So there's a range of different functionality you can you can get here with the skook and play around different things. But let's get back to sort of kind of coding with it. Let's hopefully it will let me, there we go. Just swipe back across. So the other cool thing in, in Swift Playgrounds, as we said before, is there's only certain parts of the code that are editable. So you can't completely break it. So if I tap on, on a bit here, it says tap to edit, I can just edit the numbers and the colors in this. I can't change any of the core code. So that's always um, an important thing to know. So I'm gonna stop my code. I'm gonna go to the next one. Now this is called handling my Skoog. There's some notes in here. So it, says, it shows you how to go from uh, creating notes associated with presses. So I click run my code at the moment. You can see it says if side name equals orange, then side play. So if I press now, I get orange. But if I press other sides, I don't get anything because they're not set up there. So then if, I, if we went tap to edit, you would see, look at the bottom. I already have my code coming up that I can use here to start completing that. And so I could do it myself or as a, st a student could come up and we could um, let them the, um, come in and, and you know choose the different things, if, and then copy your know, sort of side, name, and these kind of things. So it's really easy to get cracking. But the thing I wanted to point out as well is you can see there the number. So you can actually see how hard you're pressing. Now this is actually opens up some interesting functionality for um, occupational therapists or kind of students who are using Skooko maybe have quite profound physical challenges about being able to get number readouts of how hard they're able to press, how long these kind of things. And that's great for some kind of quantitative kind of detail and assessment in terms of how they're progressing with Skook and doing things in different ways. So let's stop there. So this was is just going from one side working and then you add blue, you add red, yellow and they will all play. Next one is called changing the response. Now you can see here if I'm just going to tap here so there's a whole each each one of these little sections or these chapters as they're called is really a little short lesson um, that can actually then become a whole lesson the whole kind of performance and doing different things with sound. So there's a whole bunch through here where it goes through and it shows you how to do the, the ripples, it shows you how to do the pings and create these more complex things. 
But one of the things that's great here that I think is just so engaging is on this changing the response one, if we go here and I say run my code. Now what I have here is now I have, look, I can see the data coming in. So if I'm pressing orange, there you see, you can see the data, you can see the numbers. And then what you've got there is a line set as a threshold. So this is all about explaining how you take that data and you turn it into an event on the iPad using code. So what we need to do is set a threshold. So let's change these thresholds. Let's change that to 0 0.5. And let's make that 0 0.6. Check that 0 0.7. That one 0 0.8. That one, 0 0.9. Now, so what do you think is going to happen then? Well, let's see. Am I going to be able to play them all similarly? So play my red one. It's quite easy. And now to blue, I have to press harder because I've set the threshold higher. And this actually mimics one of the functions in the Core Scoog app, which has these different thresholds that um, allow you to kind of change how easy the Scoog is to handle and how it can suit different levels of physical ability. But this... Being able to see that data, and then you can ask us, do you think we're going to have to press harder with a higher number? And then orange is right at the top, and you assign a sound to that. And then they've got these nice little bits of feedback from the playground. So this is really the, the heart and soul of Scoog and Swift Players, is opening this up and letting students see the data, what they're doing. I'm pressing, I can see as I'm changing pressing, it changes. And if I press hard enough, I can get a response. Now, I've also seen this being used by um, physiotherapists. So, you know, setting the, the Skoog threshold at different levels to try and invite more interaction. You're saying, right, so we need to try and get that sound. Can you, pr can, can you press harder, Jamie? Keep pressing, keep pressing. And it gives, you know, a visual goal. It gives an acoustic kind of goal and also allows you to track, you know, this week we got up to threshold five. Next week, we're going to try six, 6.5. And, you know, it just it brings that whole kind of thing uh, open and there's a really nice little piece of additional functionality for Scoog in doing that. So what I wanted to do now was just pause to see if there are any questions uh, on anything so far. Let's just see. Um, we've got a few attendees here. So I don't think we've got any specific questions unanswered at the moment. So that's good. I suppose we're obviously doing a, oh no, here we go. Wait, in the chat. And I've got the wrong thing up. Here we go. Please let me know which. Uh, so this is, the app is Swift Playgrounds that we're using here. I will do a little bit of time using the kind of score, core Scoog app. Yeah, the code is, the printing is quite small to try and fit everything in, but you don't necessarily have to see the code changes I'm making. So it's just, it's more to show you what goes on in, in the playground, you know, for each of these kind of uh, chapters. So um, let's push on. So, so ask me what's the mail. So this is, I mean, it's one thing that's a question is it's from programming editing from the normal environment app. So this is, it's very different from normal Scoog. So maybe we should, maybe we can show that in a minute. Um, this is really built around trying to illustrate the, illustrate Swift, Swift code and Swift playgrounds. And there are various challenges in, uh, in, in the playgrounds. For example, you know, as we go down, I mean, we could say, did I meet the band? Oh no, let's do what's my sound. So this is another great one. So this is changing the sound of the Skoog. So at the moment it says here, just let me see if, I know it's difficult. Let's just make that bigger. You don't need to see me so much. Hopefully that just for this little section here, you can hopefully see that piece of code here where it says set sound marimba so i can't edit the set sound bit i can only edit the part in the in the editable box so I hit run my code i get my scoog feedback circle up i've got my marimba there so now we could invite a student up and say right let's write some code and let's uh, change the sound so all we have to do is touch this code box here there we go and look at the bottom there all of those short cuts have come up so I'm going to choose Ocarina. I've just written the code for Ocarina. Swift is a really sensible language. The, the, the Swift code for Ocarina is Ocarina. <laughs> it's very useful. So then if I run my code now, 
quick calibration and then we've changed by writing some code we've changed the sound of that to ocarina let's let's do it again so let's try afro mallet run my code and this is it we're coding simply by uh, making simple choices on the ipad choosing preset uh, filled out pieces of code It's very simple. So it's at that level, that could engage so many students in actually taking part in, in, a, in a piece of coding as a group, as a class, um, who may not be uh, able to, you know, physically able to type uh, and have the, you know, the, the fine coordination needed to type or, or use them like that. But just by simply selecting these um, shortcuts, you can actually input the code and you change how this thing works. So by writing the code, you're changing the function. So um, as a question there, I only have eight Skoog sounds. How are you getting Rimba and Ocarina? I'm not sure if you, are you refer, referring to the sounds that are in the Skoog app? So these are the sounds. So in Swift Playgrounds, it uses what are called sound fonts. And there's quite a few of the sound fonts on this. And let me just... Um, here, if, it, if we go to meet the band here, if we go to resources, sound styles. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 19 different ones in Swift Playgrounds. Now remember, just very quickly, let's go back to changing the response there. I'm gonna make this window a bit smaller. So in the core Skoog app, remember, yes, there are a limited number of sounds in the core Skoog app. But remember, you could always connect to GarageBand and play uh, over a hundred, you know, hundreds of sounds or any MIDI compatible app. Uh, and there's loads of, of free apps that are MIDI compatible, synth apps that get, help you expand your sound and use all kinds of things. And there's also Scratch, the other free Skoog app, which allows you to record sounds and use them as well. So we're at 25 minutes past um, the hour. And so I just wanted to pause again and see if I think I've been trying to answer questions as we go. So what I'd like to do now is pause a second and start to think about, well, so we've had a look at this. We can see how really, so really what the, what the Skooks with Flayground allows you to do is build your own um, kind of musical synth. So it's um it's 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 a really you know cool way of like decide you know designing your own kind of interaction particularly with the pings um you know you can actually add chords and these different things so what i'd like to know is think so this this going back to this changing the response so in this one remember we're seeing the sounds seeing the inputs so this is data coming in you can see the numbers we can see the graph changing and the question is so what do we, what can we do with that data so here we're using it to make sounds, but what if we could do something else? What if we could use the data from this to control something like this? And this is something we can do, something we thought, well, that would be cool, wouldn't it? And what this does, again, in terms of that multi-sensory kind of element, we've got, we could create something visual, something tactile, and then something actually kinesthetic and moving. And also these things light up as well. Very cool. If you haven't seen a Sphero, it's a robotic ball that you can write code with in a variety of platforms and, and do challenges and do all kinds of things. So I'm going to stop the Swift Playground just now, the, the Skoog one. And then in my Skoog feed, um, remember down here, see all, go down to the bottom, other publishers. And here we've got Sphero, Skoog, and Skoog. So if we were to go to the Skoog one and visit the, the, uh, the feed, it would bring up all the different ones. I'm already subscribed. But one of the ones is Sphero template. So now this is, yes, we'd like to use Bluetooth. So if to have your um, Sphero, and sometimes you have to hold it close to the iPad, but here you can see it, it's lit up and it's already connected. So I'm just gonna, hopefully you see that. So here we go. Here's my little robot. Now, here it gives a, on the left-hand side, there's a little description of, of what's going on with the Skoog template playground here. And what it does, is it's going to allow you to drive the Sphero, the robot, with the Skoog. So hit run my code. There we go. 
And there we go. So now the first thing to do is you can see on the left-hand side, there's a little circle that says aim. Now this, hopefully you can see here, there's a little, oh, where's it going? So move that circle around, it's actually turning. So what it, it, it says where it's, where it's, how it's facing. So I'm gonna set it up so it's facing away from me this way. And then on the left-hand side, you can see what we've done is said, you can change these, but we've made uh, forward red, uh, left blue, right uh, green and back yellow, okay? So now if I press, look, if I press that, it, it drives off the table. If I press the other side, it comes back. Let's get it back in here. There we go. I haven't got much space to, to do this with, so if I press here, if I press there, and I don't know if you can see, it's also lighting up. So here you've got an activity that is tactile, kinesthetic, visual, and we could also add sound to that. So if we actually ran Scratch uh, or Skoog in the background, we would also get the sound element of Skoog as well, which is something that's so cool. The other thing you can do with this other thing, we also have an just controlling the lights. So in this playground, I'll put my code here, and actually I might I might turn the big light here off to see if I can can we get a better. Oh, here we go. Look, so now you can see. So we run my cursor now. I can change it to red, change it to yellow, green, blue, orange. So I'm able to change the lights here. And we could change these to different colors. We could associate them in different ways. And it's just a really nice, simple piece of interaction. And actually, for those of you that are familiar with SCOO and our color scores, we I've seen students using this to use a, one SCOOG and a Sphero to conduct another group playing a song. So here, let me show you what I mean by that. It sounds a bit far-fetched. But so if I go here now, I go into the web, and here in the SCOOG songbook, which is online, scoogmusic.com uh, slash songbook, or if you just go to support, it's easy to find. Um, yeah, so here on the support page, go down here, scroll down, and we're looking for songbook. All kinds of Skoog songbook. There we go. And here now, we've got all kinds of songs we can download. So I'm going to go to Christmas songs. Jingle bells is what we had up. Click that. So here we have this color pan. Now, you can use this color pan to then, if you play this through the Sphero playground, like this, ba, 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 then you can change the lights on this and conduct another group who have a scoop to play sounds to play a song. So that's, you're actually, you know, you're, you're taking the coded music that's been coded into colors. You're transcribing that through touch you're communicating that via a robotic device, and then you're able to conduct a remote group using that device, using color. How cool is that? Um, so that's uh, another little exercise you can do. I've also seen this being used with Morse code as well with SCOO, which again is another way, you know, a very simple code by using the sounds uh, from the SCOO to um, do problem solving and, and getting other groups to work out what, you know, what the answer to the puzzle is by the the Morse code that's being played across it, all kinds of cool ways that you can integrate these different elements of sound and music and make these make code sort of multi-sensory and engaging so that you've got color, you've got touch, you've got sound, and you've got action going on. And it really brings this all to life. So I'm going to pause there, and hopefully that's given you a bit of a, an overview of how SCOO can sort of work with Swift Playgrounds and hopefully an insight into, you know, just how it can open things up coding wise. Um, and I'll just see if there are any questions. And if there aren't any questions for those that maybe haven't got SCOOG yet or uh, thinking about it, then um, I'd like just to very quickly show uh, SCOOG the core app, maybe just quickly show Scratch and quickly show how you connect GarageBand for extra sounds. So if there are no questions on the Swift side, nope, can't see any. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive right in here. So it's my Skoog app, so it's opening here. And so in order to connect my Skoog again, I need to press the button on the bottom, Bluetooth light flashes, go here to connect my Skoog. Click, click Skoog, member, don't pair, just click cancel and it is connected up. 
Scoob does need to calibrate when it connects so it knows what not being touched is. So now I have touch aside. It's sensitive all over, which is an important thing for Scoob, which makes it really accessible to people who maybe have limited coordination and more gross motor skills. And also the sensitivity can be changed here. So a quick note on sensitivity. If you remember when we saw those numbers coming in and we had the different thresholds, when the threshold is low, that's when Skoog is at its most sensitive. So high sensitivity, low threat activation thresholds and high response will make this as sensitive as it can be for those students who have really limited mobility, but it will make it a bit jumpy. So if, if you have more able students who want to pick it up, carry it around, play it on their lap, then you're better off with a threshold of about three or four. And that way I can pick it up, move it about. I'm just pressing it there, play it in my hands and it's not gonna go off without me intending it. So that's a little note on the sensitivity. A really cool function in Skoog. Uh, so yes, yeah, Skoog, I think we saw in the chat there, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are the eight instruments that you have in the core Skoog app. So how do we get more sounds? So we've got those lovely 19 sounds in Swift Playgrounds, so we can play those in Swift, but in an easy uh, sort of, if we're just doing music and music classes, then going up here, selecting MIDI, making sure MIDI's turned on. If I turn the audio off, now, if I go to GarageBand, which should be here somewhere. Where's GarageBand? Where are you, GarageBand? Where have you gone? I don't see you. Education in here. There we go. Load that up. Hopefully. And now the integration is that smooth. So now I'm playing in GarageBand. It's important. So I'm going to choose, what should we choose here? Grungy horns. Now it doesn't have to be all these electronic sounds. For those of you that prefer some more um, traditional sounds, other here, let's try a French horn. not the greatest electronic French horn, but it's not too bad. The uh, clarinet is quite nice, I always find. Glockenspiel. All kinds of, so, and it's really, it's touch to select. So in order to connect to GarageBand, all you have to do is in the Skoog app, here we are, in the Skoog app, go up to the top middle menu, select MIDI, Make sure MIDI is turned on and turn the audio in the Skoog app off. If you turn the audio in the Skoog app on, you get the Skoog app sounds as well. And that can be quite fun as well, blending the two things together. But that's how you can get out of here and get more sounds. Um, another couple of quick things. Um, let's very quickly show you Skoog um, Scratch. Hoping that's here. There we go. So this is an app that allows you to record sounds in. And I'm gonna, it has a slightly different menu structure. You can't see my finger, but when you see, you can see that circle appearing on the screen. That's my finger touching the screen. And in Scratch, you, you just touch and hold your finger on the screen to pull up the menus. So I'm touching and holding and that pulls up a menu. This middle one is refresh. Very quickly to note on the Skoog support site and Skoog website for support, there's PDF guides for Skoog, PDF guides for Skoog Scratch, and guides on how to use GarageBand. There's the guides, uh, PDF guide on how to use the Sphero Playground, how to use the Skoog Playground, all these things there and free to download. So let's just very quickly, I'm just gonna have to unplug that. So I'm not sure if this will work actually, but so there we go. Ah, uh, shh. So now, oh, wait, we're not, oh, now if we plug that back in, we should get. Uh, those are the sounds that I just just made there. Perfect. So screws connected. So I can blend those things. So this allows me to take these could be words, they could be um, numbers sounds, animal sounds for multi-sensory stories. Really great, really simple app, Skook Scratch. 
lots of help online for that as well on our website. So I'm going to pause there and see if there are any more questions. Um, if there's anything, a note there that I've been going quite quickly. If there's anything there that you'd like me to go over, um, let me go. So we've got the software as a custom build so that we'll work with Spiro. Could use input for other coded tools as a control, like make and exit. Yeah, I mean, so actually in Swift, so let's go back to Swift here. Let's go back to the Scoob Playground. So in the R Playground, if you go, if you can, oh, it's quite small. Wait a minute, let me, you don't need to see my visage. Let's make this bigger. Here we go. So hopefully now you can see. There we go. And in the top right of the um, code view, it's three dots. If I touch that, I get some extra things here. So I can look at documentation. So I look at documentation. This gives me some developer stuff. I'm, I'm trying to find glossary here. It gives you um, all this information about this. What I'm trying to find here, somewhere in here, is actually being able to get to the source code in Skoog. Um, advanced. Yes. So. Tools, advanced, view auxiliary source files, contents, chapters, basically that chapter, pages, resources. So this actually gives you all of the different, different code that you can access and you can access how to set the, the SCOOG up, okay? So that's something worth, it's quite, that's quite advanced. So, sorry, that was it just there. You could see how, how, how you could use that. And it also works, it does work with Wonder Workshop. That's a slightly different, I don't have my, let me see here. So I don't have my um, dash with me at home just now, but I can show you what the playground looks like. So if you wanted to use it with other coded tools as a controller, you could, look at the um, additional resources, the advanced resources in the Scoog Swift Playground and look at the source code and be able to build your own connectivity from that. Um, and so if you're familiar with Swift, you, you'll be able to do that and that would be a great way of expanding that functionality. If, if anyone does do that, please let us know. We'd love to share that with people and if there's a different, uh, different uh, connections that people be, want to make. And also do email us um, um, at Scoog Music, if there are, you know, tools like Makey Makey that you would like to be able to use with Swift in this way, and we can look at seeing if we can add those playgrounds as well. We're always interested to add new connectivity and functionality, and it's great if that comes from the user base. But just very quickly, this is the Dash Scoog template. So again, this is very similar to the Sphero one. And this just really, it's less of, this is less about altering the code, but allows you to, it takes a little while to load. Um, there we go, okay. So if I had my uh, dash, I could connect it, connect my Skoog. And when I hit run my code, it allows me to say red to move forward, blue to turn left. And the way that dash moves is in little blocks. So it's about 20 centimeters, or 30 centimeters moving forward. So if you press red, he moves forward 30 centimeters. You press him again, he moves forward. And so you can actually do kind of mazes and problem solving and sort of puzzle solving in that way. So that's another great resource. So let's reduce this again as we're coming to the, coming now to 22 and then coming on with the hour. So let's reduce the size of that. Let's balance this out again. And let's just see if there are any, any more questions. I seem to have a couple of chat things open. Q and A. Yes, we'll, we'll put this up. So, will the SCOO control that virtual dash? It doesn't control the virtual dash. No, it only um, you need the dash connected. That's something well, we should look into. That actually, uh, so you could actually just um, in a bit like controlling byte. That would be fun, wouldn't it? That's a that's a great that's a great idea. We hadn't thought of that. We're so so fixated on the physical that um, we hadn't thought about that. So that's something that we can look into. Um, so that is Skoog and Swift Playgrounds, um, a really, um, I find very engaging way of looking at code. Um, and, and often it's, it's quite a good way of introducing 
kind of code and sort of playgrounds to a group of students to let them see what they could do with it, what they could achieve with it. So, and sort of enabling them to take Skoog and via Swift Playgrounds, drive a robot, say, or fly a drone. We do have a parrot template as well. Um, allows, allows them to kind of see what's possible. And it sort of brings the code, you know, it brings it out of that code view, you know, this, going back here again, you know, this, um, you know, numbers and letters that are kind of bunched up on the screen. It takes it out of that and really makes it happen in real life and allows them to touch, you know, when they're pressing it, they can see the numbers, see it changing. So it brings that multi-sensory element out. Um, using the advanced tools, yes, you can start to think about, you know, projects connecting it to other things. And, you know, and I've, I've you know, seen it used in a variety of different, different ways. Problem solving, um, looking at those elements, of putting things in the right order. Um, composition tasks using color. Uh, you know, you can actually use elements of the Skoog songbook to create musical puzzles you know so you could take a, you know one of the songbooks print those out in pdf cut up the color blocks and re, you know put them in a random order and then with the notes assigned properly get the students to work out you know what order these need to go in to play jingle bells say and that would be a lot that's a that's a really great challenge uh it's um, and you know a lot, a lot of thinking a lot of um se sequential ordering and these kind of things all great kind of computational thinking skills all fun and all just using music. So we're now at quarter to six. That's 45 minutes. I'm, I'm really pleased that uh, so many of you have stayed on and listened and engaged with the webinar. Uh, are there any more questions from anyone? Anyone would like to know anything more just generally about Skoog or um, about uh, any of the apps or more specifically about Swift Playgrounds? I can answer that. And if not, I think we'll be calling it an evening, um, well, for me, an evening here. Um, and it's a cold and wintry night, so we'll get tucked up by the fire and, and uh, see what the evening brings. So, great. Remember, if you don't have Skoog, you can uh, get a Skoog from Amazon or from Apple. Um, and I think Alyssa's put the link up and we'll be following up. Um, I think we'll be following up also with... Um, a couple of PDF downloads, perhaps. Maybe we'll follow up with a, a PDF download to show how to use the Sphero template. Um, and we can follow up with those resources. So thanks for joining me. Do remember, you can um, uh, always reach out to us, Info at Skoog Music or myself, Ben at skoogmusic.com, uh, for help and resources. Um, really, I'm looking forward to hearing what you, what you guys get up to. And if you do have any... Uh, the when you were asking about Makey Makey, if you explore that and, and want to explore that again, uh, please do get in touch with us. Let us know how you get on. Um, we might start having a look at that too. I think we've got a, a Makey Makey kit around the office somewhere. Um, take care, stay safe. Uh, and um, obviously social distancing and all these certain things. Actually, that's where, you know, using the Sphero, driving it across to another group to conduct and things, that could be quite a useful social distancing tool. Oh, there's so many ways. But yes, stay safe, stay well. Please keep in touch. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next webinar. Um, it's a little while since we did a webinar, um, what with everything that's been going on, but we're going to be back onto a regular schedule. And if you would like us to cover any other specific things in a webinar, uh, like uh, making music inclusive in the classroom or uh, using Skoog for um, making band more accessible, these kind of things, please do let us know and we'll get those topics on the webinar schedule and we'll see you all soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.